squeeze out from between the folds of a rotting log and boom, you're alive. No dramatic entrance, no birth announcement. Just a tiny, squishy, worm-looking thing with too many legs. Welcome to your life as a velvet worm. And yes, you're as soft as you feel. Right off the bat, your mom actually stuck around, which is a nice change of pace in the insect world. She spent months carrying you inside her body, and now you're out, ready to experience all the glorious wonders of being, well, a living tube with stubby legs. You crawl around, looking like someone took a caterpillar and stretched it on a taffy puller. First things first, you need to figure out how those legs work. There's a lot of them, anywhere from 13 to 43 pairs depending on what kind of velvet worm you are. That's right, you might have up to 86 legs. Imagine trying to coordinate all those at once. It's like being the world's worst millipede impersonator. You wobble around on your soft, unjointed legs, moving like a drunk accordion. No bones, no joints, just hydraulic pressure moving fluid around your body to make those stubby legs work. Nature really phoned it in on this one. The first few days of life are a blur of figuring out how not to trip over yourself. Eventually, you get the hang of it, sort of. Your walking style is still best described as enthusiastic wobbling, but at least you're moving forward now. Time to learn about hunting because you're hungry and those antennae on your head aren't just for show. You spot a small cricket nearby and get ready for your first hunt. This is where things get weird. You don't have claws or powerful jaws. Instead, you have something way grosser. Slime cannons. Two openings near your head can shoot sticky, quick-hardening goo up to 16 inches away. That's like you being able to sneeze glue at something half a football field away. You creep closer to the cricket, your body low to the ground. The cricket senses something and starts to move. Now's your chance. You fire your slime jets, and streams of white goo shoot out, crisscrossing over the cricket like a spider web made of super glue. Except your aim is terrible. You're new at this, remember? The slime shoots wide, missing the cricket entirely and hitting a nearby pebble instead. Great, you just gift-wrapped a rock. The cricket starts hopping away while you frantically reload your slime cannons. It takes about 15 minutes to produce more slime, not exactly rapid-fire weaponry, but you're persistent if nothing else. Round 2. This time you inch even closer, practically nose to antenna with your prey. The cricket freezes, perhaps wondering what this strange bluish tube with legs is doing. You fire again, this time success. Streams of white goo coat the cricket, hardening almost instantly. The cricket is stuck, struggling against your sticky trap. You waddle over, taking your sweet time because, let's face it, you're not winning any speed contests with those legs. Now for the fun part, eating. You inject digestive saliva into the cricket through your jaws, which turns its insides into a smoothie that you can slurp up. Yum. Your first meal is a success. Even if the process is nightmare fuel for anything watching, you grow slowly, hiding in damp places during the day and coming out at night to hunt. The forest floor is your kingdom, as long as that kingdom is dark, wet, and filled with rotting things. You avoid light because your soft body would dry out faster than a towel in the desert. No tough exoskeleton for you, just that velvety, water permeable skin that gives you your name. One night, you're sliming your way through the leaf litter when suddenly the ground shakes. A torrential downpour begins, turning your normally damp environment into a full-on swimming pool. Water rushes through your habitat, creating tiny rivers between the rocks and logs. For most bugs, this would be a disaster. But for you, it's more like a water park opening day. Your soft body actually loves the extra moisture, though swimming isn't exactly your forte with all those legs flailing about. The rushing water carries you away from your familiar hunting grounds, depositing you in a new section of forest you've never explored before. New territory means new challenges, but also new buffet options. Here, you discover a colony of termites living in a rotting stump. Jackpot. It's like finding an all-you-can-eat restaurant that doesn't know you're coming. You spend the next few nights gorging yourself on termites, shooting slime with reckless abandon creating what looks like the aftermath of a tiny glue factory explosion. You spend most of your time under rocks, inside rotting logs, or among the leaf litter where it's nice and humid. This isn't exactly the glamorous life of soaring eagles or roaming lions. Your daily commute is literally moving from one piece of decaying wood to another, living the high life. At some point, you notice other velvet worms around. Some are smaller, some larger. 
but all equally squishy and leg-heavy. You're not exactly a social butterfly, or social velvet worm, in this case. You mostly ignore each other, except when it comes to food. If prey is scarce, things can get ugly. Bigger velvet worms might decide smaller ones look like a nice meal. Size matters in your world, and unfortunately, you're not the biggest slime shooter in the forest. Months pass, and you continue growing. You molt your soft outer layer from time to time, shedding it like an old sweater that's gotten too tight. Each time, you're vulnerable until your new skin hardens a bit. During these molts, you hide in the dampest, darkest spots you can find, hoping nothing finds you while you're literally caught with your pants down. After about a year or so, you reach adulthood. If you're a female, you're probably bigger than the males around you. Size queens, the lot of you. If you're a male, you're smaller but still have all the slime shooting skills needed to survive. Mating season arrives and things get weird again. If you're a male, you deposit a package of sperm somewhere on the ground. That's right, you don't even hand it directly to the female. You just leave it there like forgotten takeout and hope she finds it. The female then picks it up with her genital opening. Talk about low effort dating. If you're a female, congratulations. You now get to carry developing eggs or embryos inside your body for months. Some velvet worm species lay eggs, while others give birth to live young. Either way, it's a long process that takes a lot out of you. And after all that work, you might eat some of your babies if food is scarce. Family dinner takes on a whole new meaning. Years go by, and you continue your squishy existence. You've survived rain that could drown you, dry spells that could dehydrate you, and countless predators that would love to have you for lunch. Birds, reptiles, and even other invertebrates all see you as a walking snack bar. Your only defenses are hiding, running away, slowly, and shooting slime. It's not much, but it's gotten you this far. Your typical day goes something like this. Wake up at dusk, crawl around looking for food, shoot slime at anything smaller than you, eat, avoid being eaten, find a new damp spot to hide, sleep. Repeat for the next five to seven years if you're lucky enough to live that long. It's not exactly the material for an action-packed movie. As you get older, your slime shooting accuracy might improve, but your body starts to wear down. Those many legs don't move as quickly as they used to. Your once vibrant blue or orange or brown velvet skin, depending on your species, starts to fade. Hunting becomes harder, and avoiding becoming someone else's dinner takes more effort. One night, as you're hunting, you notice something moving nearby. It's bigger than you, and it's spotted you first. You try to retreat to the safety of a nearby log, but your aging legs aren't as coordinated as they once were. The predator, maybe a small reptile or a large spider, moves in. You fire your slime cannons in desperation, but the predator is too quick. It's got you now. In your final moments, you might reflect on your life as a velvet worm. All those crickets you liquefied and slurped. All those damp logs you called home. All those legs you somehow managed to coordinate. It wasn't glamorous, it wasn't fast-paced, but it was yours. And now you're about to become an inside-out smoothie yourself. The circle of life, velvet worm style. And just when you think it's all over, the predator suddenly drops you. A larger predator has appeared, and your would-be killer decides it's not worth sticking around. You slither away, missing two legs but otherwise intact. Turns out today is not the day you become someone's protein shake. You crawl back to your log, leaving a trail of blue blood behind you. Yes, your blood is actually blue, the one cool thing about being a velvet worm. As you recuperate in your damp sanctuary, something extraordinary happens. Your missing legs begin to regenerate. Slowly but surely, tiny buds form where your legs once were. Over time, they grow into fully functional, if slightly smaller, replacement legs. It's like having a built-in spare parts kit. Not many creatures can regrow body parts, but you've got that superpower tucked away in your squishy arsenal. The seasons change and you've somehow survived another year. You're practically ancient in velvet worm years now. Your once vibrant color has faded to a pastel version of its former glory. Your slime doesn't shoot quite as far as it used to, but you've learned a thing or two in your time crawling through the forest floor. You've survived floods, droughts, predators, and even that one time you accidentally slimed yourself and spent three days stuck to a leaf. You've feasted on hundreds of insects, produced dozens of offspring, some of which you may or may not have eaten during tough times, and explored at least 20 square feet of forest, an epic journey by velvet worm standards. 
As you settle into a particularly cozy spot in a rotting log for what might be your final rest, you reflect on your strange existence. You never climbed a mountain, swam an ocean, or flew through the sky. But you mastered the art of moving 86 legs in harmony, shot slime with the precision of a tiny, soft marksman, and survived in a world where almost everything wanted to eat you. There's probably a lesson here about perseverance or luck or the unpredictability of life, but honestly, you're too busy being relieved that all 86 of your legs are still attached to your body to care.